six, we're going to talk about inverse um, of a square matrix, just square ones. Inverse. Inverse of a square matrix. Oh, Ben, I'm going to take attendance for you. I'll get in trouble with that. Beautiful. Okay. Inverse of a square matrix. So, inverse is basically, you know, the opposite of something. So, we're going to find the opposite of these things. Um, we have to go through a process of steps in order to do that. Um, so, if we want to show that A, um, we'll actually show that B is the inverse of A. Okay. If we want to do it this way, we're going to be given two matrices, A equals negative 1, 2, negative 1, 1. B equals 1, negative 2, 1, negative 1. Okay. If we want to show that these are inverse of each other, we need to multiply A and B together. And you need to be able to multiply B and A together. And you should end up with a matrix for both of those that goes 1, 0, 0, 1. If they're inverse of each other, when you multiply them together, they're going to give you that output when it's a square matrix. 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay? So if I multiply A and B together, I have negative 1, 2, negative 1, 1. I have 1, negative 2, 1, negative 1. So to multiply those together, I have these four spaces. Remember, I multiply row by column. So if I multiply this row by this column, I have negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1, plus 2 times 1, which is 2. I have uh, negative 1 times, nope, I'm going down, negative 1 times 1, right, which is negative 1, plus, I'm not doing that right, yeah, I gotta go this way, negative 1 times negative 2, which is 2, and then 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1, that's not right, so. Row by column. Oh, I have to multiply this row by that column. So. Negative 1 times negative 2, which is 2. And then 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. So it's negative 2. There it goes. Then I multiply this row by this column. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, plus 1 times 1, which is 1. And then I multiply this row by this column, so negative 1 times negative 2, which is 2, plus 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. You end up getting, when you multiply those together, okay, you end up getting 1, 0, 0, 1. The only other way I have to check it is I have to multiply B by A. And if I get the same output, then they are inverse of each other. So if I multiply matrix B by matrix A first, that would be 1, negative 2, 1, negative 1, times negative 1, 2, negative 1, 1. Okay. I get 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1, plus negative 2 times negative 1, which is 2. I get negative, I get 1 times 2, which is 2, and then negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. I get 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1, and I get negative 1 times 2. Did I copy them? 
1, negative 2, 1, negative 1, right? Negative 1, 2, negative 1, 1. So multiply this, put over by this column. Oh, so 1 times negative 1, negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1 is 0. Or it's 1. And then 1 times 2, which is 2, plus negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1, which gives me, once again, 1, 0, 0, 1. So those are inverse of each other because they come out to that pattern of 1, 0, 0, 1. So we're going to work on finding inverses of matrices um, or proving that they're inverses of each other. So that's when they give them to you. You just multiply them both ways. That's the easy part. When they don't give you the inverse and ask you to find it, that's when we have to do a little bit more math. Okay? <coughs> So if they tell us, find the inverse and they give us A equals and it is 1, 4, negative 1, negative 3. Okay. In order to find the inverse of that first, we have to do a little bit of um, matrix work and work things backwards. So, I want to figure out when I multiply this by something, okay, um, and I'm just going to put like x1, x2, it doesn't matter what, what numbers I put, okay. When I multiply this by something, I want to figure out how I can get 1, 0, 0, 1. So, let's just put x1. supposed to get 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay? So, I'm going to do the math and, like, I'm multiplying this together, and that's going to give me x's and things like that. I'm going to be able to set them equal to equations so that I can work things backwards and solve from there. Okay? So, when I multiply this out, if I was trying to solve this, um, I would have 1 times x, so I would have x1, and then I would have plus 4 times um, x3, times call, 4 times x3, right? Okay, I would get that, and that would be set equal to 1, yes? Okay, you set that equal to 1 because this is the space that equals when I do row times column. When I do this row times this column, it sets equal to 0, correct? Okay, so I am not, um, yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and do 1 times x, which is, uh, or 1 times x2, which is x2 plus 4x4 equals 0. This would be row times column, so negative x1 plus negative 3 x 3 equals 0, yeah, and then negative 1, negative x 2 plus negative 3 x sub 4 equals 1. So I have four equations off of that, okay? I'm going to take the two equations that have the same subbase. This one right here does, and this one right here does. These two do also, but I'm just going to take these and I'm going to do some substitution elimination type thing, okay? Because they both have um, an x1 I can solve from there. So I'm going to group those two, two together and then I'm going to come back and group this with this one, okay? So if I rewrite this, I have x1 plus 4x cubed sub 3 equals 1. And then I put it with this one, I get negative x1 plus um, negative 3x sub 3 equals 1. Nope, that's not what I want. Equal to 0. Yes. And then these two go together. x sub 2 plus 4x sub 4 equals 0 and negative x sub 2 plus negative 3x sub 4 equals 1. So I have those equations together now, okay? 
So you need to solve the first system using um, row operations to determine what x1 um, is. Okay. So I need to use some substitution elimination type stuff from there. So if I solve this, how do I end up solving that? What would I do? Figure this out. How can I set up um, elementary row operations? What's that mean when I say that? <laughs> That's in section 8.4, I believe. Yes, elementary row operations on page 646. That's where we have to set up um, matrices and change the rows and do fun things like that. Lindsay says that's not fun. Okay, so we can do it that way where we interchange two rows, multiply all that fun jazz. Um, so if I set this up, right, this would be one, <coughs> four, one, negative one, negative three, zero, like that, correct? Okay. Um, So from there, we want a one leading, which we have, correct? That's good. Now we need to get zeros. We need a zero here, right? And a one there. Is that what we need? Yes. So we need to take row one and add it to row two. So I get one, four, one. And then I would get zero, one, zero, correct? Like that? Seven. Yeah. It can't be right. It can't equal zero. It would have to equal one. There's another way to do this too that would make it easier than this. But this book doesn't teach it that way. Um, okay. So if I set that up, that's how, if that's a one, I need that also to be a one, don't I? So then I would get zero. That one will work. I can't get a zero as my solution. So I won't substitute in right. I need it to be like negative three. What happens when we do this? Negative three, opposite of four. I might be doing the easier way for you. Let's try this. This is how you learned it last year. That times this gives me negative three, right? Okay, uh, plus four. This gives me negative four plus four. This gives me three plus negative three, right? Yes. And this gives me four plus negative three, which would give me one, zero, zero, one. Okay, this is a much easier way to do it. Let's talk about this method. So we can do it this long way, or you can take your original matrix, one, four, negative one, negative three. You switch the two corner spots. So I switch these, flip them so that's negative three, one. And then you make these two spots opposite of what they were. Meaning, if this is positive 4, it becomes negative 4. If this is 1, it becomes negative 1. You multiply diagonally. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. And you subtract from it, okay? Subtract from it, multiplying this together, which 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. So I had a double negative. I changed it to a positive. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. You put that over top of 1, which gives you 1. 
So you would multiply this matrix that you created by 1, which means I end up getting negative 3, negative 4, 1, and 1. When you multiply those two matrices together, leading with your old one times your new one, you will get 1, 0, 0, 1. That's how you find the inverse. You don't need to check it. That's how you would check it. This is how you find the inverse. You flip these two spots, make these opposite of what they were, multiply by the determinant. We're finding the determinant. Wait, so you, three you flip them and you change their values? So if I flip these two, and then you change the value of those two. Only those two? Only those two. So you flip corner one and corner four. You change the value of corner two and corner three. You multiply those together, okay? And whatever answer you get over here, you put over one. You take that answer and re-multiply it into this matrix that you created, which will give you the inverse matrix of what you wanted. So when I multiply this all by 1, I get negative 3, negative 4, 1, and 1. Now, let's talk about if it looks different than that. Like, let's try another one of these problems. Let's say you want to find the inverse, okay, of a matrix that I'm only going to give you 2 by 2s. I'm not going to give you a 3 by 3. So let's say we want to find an um, inverse of... I'm using the determinant basically to find the inverse. Let's say we want to find the inverse of 3, negative 1, negative 2, and 2. Okay. What's the first step I need to do? So do you need to switch it now? Yes. Okay, so you switch the 3 to the 2. Okay, and then what do I do with these? And then you make them both positive. Both positive in this case. Now, from here, I multiply this to give me 6 minus... Yes, it's always going to be minus. That was a double negative, which made it a positive. Oh, so 6 minus two. 2, which gives me uh, 4, right? And I put that over top. I put, um, actually put <coughs> it under. So I put 1 over top of that. I always put 1 over top of what my answer is. So I get 1 fourth, okay? I take this matrix of 2, 1, 2, 3, and I multiply it by the one-fourth that I got, by the determinant. That's called the determinant. What's two times a fourth? What's, what? Well, what's two times one-fourth? That's easy. Put two times one is two. What's two-fourths reduced down to? Uh, one-half. One-half. Yes. What's one times a fourth? Uh, one-fourth. What's two <laughs> times a fourth again? No, one half. And what's three times a fourth? One twelfths. No, it's three, three over, it's three times three. one, so it's three, three fourths. fourths. This is the inverse of this original matrix. That is your inverse, because when you multiply them together, you're going to get one, zero, zero, one. Okay, that's easy enough, right? Okay, that way is much easier, I think. Wait, how did you get four Because you take the determinant, that's what this is called, the determinant. When we switch these and change the signs, 6 minus 2 is 4, and you always put it under 1, whatever oh, your answer is, under one. 1. And that's how you get 1 fourth. You multiply back into this matrix that you changed oh, around. One, one, okay. Yeah, sorry, that was 1, so that's why it looks good. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, I Okay, so that's what we're going to work on today, finding the inverse like that, with just 2 by 2, just four, uh, two by 2s. Nothing larger, um, and that's where we're going to stop today. And tomorrow we'll re